Marcus Stevenson Jr. here, friend. I am just delighted to have you to watch our program. It means so much to us. We don't take this moment for granted. You are very important to God, and for that reason alone, that makes you important to us. Stay tuned as you begin to view our program. I guarantee you that God will give us some words to speak into your lives, something you will see, uh, words you will hear, uh, even the anointing you feel from all of this television. I believe that you're going to experience a change coming up in your life this year and that God is going to use this ministry to order this change. I don't care how many beautiful Bibles we can have. I don't care how many good preachers we can have. I don't care how many services you can attend. You are responsible to receive what God has given you. And it's sad to say most people never take the time to hear God at his word. And when most people say they heard it, they never take the time to actually let it penetrate their heart and to receive it. And yet it's the same people saying that David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that thou might not sin against God. It ain't enough to quote it. You got to hide it in there. Amen. You got to let that word really get deep down and penetrate your heart. You ever seen people cook meat and maybe they may barbecue or may put some on the grill or, or they may just put some in the oven. Sometimes they do what they call marinate that meat because they know putting season on the outside ain't good enough by itself. This thing got to soak so it just won't be on the top surface. Hello, meat. Hello, somebody. Sometimes we got a top surface word, but we never let that thing soak inside of us. So we're so quick to go back to the same old thing. We're so quick to live the same old way. But when God gives you something, he want to give you something that will stick with you forever. You say, how do you know? He already told you he want to give you everlasting life. Yeah. Everlasting life is something that lasts forever. Tell somebody it's something that lasts forever. Tell them that. And how many know you don't need a temporary fix? You see this stuff I see and we need more than a temporary fix. We need something that will be there even when other folks walk off, even when other people leave, even when you can't depend on folks. You need somebody, which is God, that you can depend on no matter what the case, what the cause, and what the situation is. So when God send you people in your life and send you men and women of God and send you elders, he didn't send it so they can just sit back and look good or you can just marvel at them. He sent them in your life so you can supernaturally receive the gifts that God has placed in them for your life. Yeah. The Bible talks about, I believe it in the book of uh, Psalms, where the Bible talks about, I preached this so, so many times. The Bible said that the uh, psalmist wrote and said, he received gifts for men that the Lord God may dwell among you. Somebody say, God dwell among you. Dwell well, when Paul rehearsed that scripture, Paul interpreted God dwelling among the people as God's apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and his advantage. And I know some of us don't like it, but I got to tell you anyways. Some of us are trying to get close to God, but you're not taking the time to receive his apostles, prophets. I know you ain't going to talk to me. His pastors, his teachers, and his evangelists. We say we pray. We say we seek in God. But we won't do the least of the words and, and won't do the least of the instructions you was given. Amen. And I'm not here to try to just pity pat your feet. No, I'm not here to put you down. But I'm here to tell you that's how you're missing the blessing. You cannot be blessed outside of receiving who God sent in your life. Because anytime you don't receive who God sent, what you're basically telling God through your actions is, God, you made a mistake by sending that person. I know you ain't going to clap. That's okay. I'm going to talk to you, though. How can you tell God he made a mistake by who he sent in your life? When God sends somebody, he already saw the day before you saw the day. He already saw your need before you even knew you had a need. And he sent them there so you can receive them. Because I just read the scripture. Listen to me in here. That he that receiveth who I send, receive me. Why would God send you a portion or a representative of himself if they can't get the job done? You ever notice how critical people are on headships, how critical people are on God's men and God's women, as if they can see better than God? Well, I don't feel like they can do it. I don't feel, and I ain't talking about some crooked, sorrowed nosed preacher who ain't dedicated and ain't annoying. I'm talking about real men and women of God. Yeah, I said that. Real men and women of God that you see miracles, see signs and wonders. Sometimes you still so critical and criticizing them. The devil will always give you an excuse why you shouldn't follow them. Remember what the Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul told his people, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. 
Man, we said today people put us all over social media and think we're a bunch of cuckoos. But that's what Jesus said. Receive him that I sent. Receive the ones that I have given unto you because what I gave you, yes, they may be human. Yes, they may have some flaws, but I saw their flaws. I saw their humanity before you saw it, but I still told you to receive them. Amen. And I talk to you, I'll see many kids in here tonight, and I know um, I really believe God going to pack the house tomorrow morning. Amen. But I ain't so worried about tomorrow, I'm going to miss tonight. Amen. Ain't about how many people, it's about what's in your heart and who you receive. And this is going to sound hard when I say, some people are not here because they showed they ain't received nothing. Amen. But if you just received, yes. and some of you, you said, that, yeah, I said, it's the facts. You just received. It's a bunch of people that may have quit your job, but you're still getting a check, ain't you? <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to me. It's only in church we follow the crowds. Yes. It's only in church where we put our salvation in somebody else's hand. You got to know enough about God for yourself. Where are my Nicodemus is at? Wait a minute. One thing I know, that no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Maybe a bunch of folks followed him. Maybe a bunch of folks left him. But I'm going to be like the disciples. Lord, where else I got to go? You got the words of eternal life. When I see God is with somebody and God sent them in my life, I don't care how many folks leave. I am going to receive who God sent. Jesus had thousands left him at one time. And you don't stay somewhere feeling sorry for people. They came to Jesus and started weeping because he was on the cross. And Jesus said, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. Yes, you may have affected me in some ways. Yes, you may have hurt me some. But you hurt yourself more than you hurt anybody when you don't receive who God plays in your life. Amen. How many of y'all know, if I got a secret and I know that there's a treasure somewhere hidden in my house somewhere, and if I was coming to you, let's say I came to mom and say, Mom, I want to tell you a secret because I want to see you get blessed with this treasure. If mom says, shut up, preacher, I don't want to hear what you got to say. When I leave, I still got my secret, uh -huh. and I still got my treasure. Yes. But guess who ain't got it? Uh -huh. The one who didn't receive it. Right. Do you think God lost anything? God ain't going to never lose nothing. Y'all ain't talking to me. God ain't going to never lose nothing. But when you don't receive who God's sin, you come up on the losing end. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Watch this very carefully. Let's start at verse number 34. Just follow me in the Bible. I may be the weirdest thing you've seen on this side of the Mississippi River, but I make a lot of sense. Matthew 23, start at verse number 34. Just simple stuff we know. But I want to show you this, Rook. I want to show you this. Glory to God. When you have it, just simply say amen. Glory to Jesus. Matthew 23, verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets. Is that in your Bible? Are you still here? Amen. I send unto you prophets and wise men. Follow me very, very carefully. And scribes. Some of them, watch this. And some of them ye shall kill. Y'all follow me? And do what? So he already tells you, it's not a, it's not a battle that I didn't send some people to you. But look how folks have treated the people when they got sent. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I wish I had some folks. Just, see, if you just lend me your ear, you'll find out. I don't make this stuff up. If you just lend me your ear, you'll find out. I'm not just here giving a preacher promotional. This is in your Bible. And Jesus talked about it. And most people get upset and want to get personal. And we want to start telling people off. When you, if you just read your Bible, you'll see the same thing I saw. He said, I'm going to send unto you prophets. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, he's in the Bible. He's in the word. I was like, where do you get this stuff from? I just read. I send unto you prophets, verse 34, Matthew 23, 34. And wise men give you scribes. And some of them, he didn't say all, oh, but some of them ye shall kill. Then he said, you're going to kill them all, but some of them you're going to crucify them. You're going to put them to the ring. <laughs> you're going to wear their jacket out. That's what my daddy said, wear their jacket out. Watch this. And some of them you sell skirt. 
Where did he say you're going to scourge them at? Right there in the synagogue. What is the synagogue? The place where they was coming and saying they was worshiping God. Yes. Now, can you not see that's exactly where most time your problem come from? Most time, sinner folks walk in your services. They much more humble, got much more of a reception of you. And them church folks you didn't preach to for a year got attitude problems. Sitting there with indignation. I just knew tonight was going to be my night. Sitting there rolling their eyes at you. Won't even give you an amen. Won't even clap. They didn't been around you for years and they still sizing you up. It's no surprise to God. Somebody say you throwing out. Well, baby, just catch it. I'm not afraid to preach because you may not like it. And I ain't trying to make you mad. But we have to deal with what the problem is. And the Lord spoke to me and said, son, this is the problem right here. The people have seen miracles. They have seen signs and wonders. But the problem is a lot of people are still not receiving him that I sent. It's getting quiet in Conway. He said, look, are you going to scourge them right there in your synagogue? Can you tell me you ain't seeing miracles? You ain't seeing wonders? You ain't seeing a proof that God is with folks? And them the same folks, folks will walk off and leave. Them the same ones people won't respect. I'll go right down there to school when it starts this week and say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, to a teacher. And you don't know how they live it. And come to church and talk to the preacher like he a scolded dog. Go to traffic court because you're trying to get out of a ticket. They say, stand, you'll pop up. Weak ankles and all, you up. Preacher say, stand, give God praise. Look at him like, what? Man, I must be doing some scratching. Amen. I say, preacher, you mad? No, I ain't mad, but I got to show you. Preacher asks you to come up at a certain time. Ask you to perform in your position in ministry. And you go going to argue him down. That's not God. And we wonder why we don't have the anointing in our churches. You say, why are you so hard against the church? Because the Bible said the blind lead the blind, they both going to fall in the ditch. How can we go and help the world? The church in the mess. And if most of us tell the truth, you don't feel the glory of God in the church like you used to feel. And the reason why is because people are right there in the synagogue like Jesus said, and we're trying to pick and choose who God is going to use. I got news for you, baby boy, baby girl. God going to use who he want, when he want, the way he want. And if you got a problem, he'll be like he told Moses. I am that I am. You can't tell God who to use. I mean, the people probably look at me the last several years of my life and probably say, I don't think he's saved. I don't think God should use you. God don't care. Some of y'all folks probably look at you and feel like you disqualified. God didn't ask their permission before he saved you. And we have to be careful that we don't fall in that same realm and start sizing people up and criticizing them and looking at them as if who do you think you are? You know, we treat preachers and men and women of God like you think you Mr. or Mrs. Big Stuff. No, I am a child of God. You are a child of God. You just as saved as I am. But God put me in one position just like he put you in a different position. How many of y'all got humans? That's, how many of y'all got babies that's aliens? Praise the Lord. They humans just like you, ain't they? They may act like some aliens sometimes. I'm gonna say, how you say that? I got four. But they're still humans. They are human and you are human. Right? Now, if you lost about that, come on, let me pray for you now. But just cause everybody in the house is a human, still don't mean they're at the same level as you. Ah. Just because everybody in church is saved, to me, everybody at the same levels. If we all at the same levels, how can somebody help somebody? How can somebody bring somebody else to a place if we all at the same place? When Peter fell down and he was walking on the water, if Jesus was in the same place as Peter, he would never be able to pick him up. Peter, you fell. Jesus didn't. And because Jesus was still riding up high, he can reach down low and pick somebody else up. We get in so many complexes. You think you're better. No, you think that I think that I'm better. When everybody has some problem, I know stuff about you. Got quiet on that note. Still don't disqualify them from being a man or woman of God. 
And Jesus plainly said, receive him that I sent. How many of y'all know you don't care if it's a baby? You don't care if it's a grown man, white man, black man, Chinese man, a Vietnamese man. You don't care if it's a Taliban man. If they come to you tonight and say, I'm giving you $1 million, I promise you, if you want it bad enough, you're going to be receiving it. Then I'm saying, huh, who do you think you is, China man? You be bound like him. Thank you. Because it wasn't the person you were so much caught up in. It was in what they had. We've got too personal on who it is, and we ain't paying attention to what they got. If God got somebody that he sent to you to get you a blessing, if you don't receive them, then you didn't receive what God gave them to give to you. Elisha had to follow Elijah because Elijah had the anointing for Elisha. Are you still here? I like to be honest and transparent. I preached in big places. I preached in small places. Some of y'all see tonight, we've been here. Even during the survival, I've seen and came here. It was hard to get a seat out there. I come tonight and look and see it's a little bit empty. But can I tell you something? I have to go with the flow of God. Some of us can't speak until you got a five-star hotel, got a guaranteed restaurant that's going to serve you a steak. And I got to tell you, because I got that kind of ministry. That's why God can't use you. Because you never learn to be faithful in a few things. Yes. I've slept in churches. Right. You think I wanted to? Anybody I want to? I was in my body living sacrifice. And because you got to be found faithful in a few things, that's when God said elevating you in many things. Amen. Some of us are prophetic, but God can't use you in the prophetic because how can God trust you with a word that you don't see, that you hear, when you don't even, he can't even trust you with a word you can read. You're reading, you should tithe, and you don't tithe. You're reading, you should love, you walk around with unforgiveness. You're reading to obey them, they got the rule over you. And you still struggle with that. And you, I'm a prophet, prophet nothing. Learn how to follow what you read, then you can follow what you hear. I'm in trouble. Tell somebody, say neighbor, neighbor. Matter of fact, come on, catch him out of hand. Say neighbor. neighbor. I'm just checking your pulse. If you know I'm right, just say, you're right. Look, somebody said, it may hurt, but he's right. Watch this. I'm almost done with you. He said, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogue. Can you tell me you don't see this happening right now in the churches across America? Some of y'all see all these perverted uh, preachers, perverted pastors, churches feel folks flocking to that type of stuff. And you start preaching and showing folks what's in the Bible. And all of a sudden, I'm sick. I ain't going to show up. God, lead me somewhere else. You was a lie. Sometimes people just looking for a way out of that unction of the anointing because they don't want to live for God the way they should. And I'm not here to run down people. But what I'm here to tell you, you got to get to the point that you don't let the devil trick you out of your blessing. God always does something that challenges you. How is it faith if it ain't a challenge? Come on, somebody. We walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to have your faith challenged. Everything God gives you is challenged. Right now when I preach, some of you in your mind, this is tough. This is rough. I ain't used to submitting. I ain't used to being humble. But used to it or not, God is challenging your flesh. And I mean, if a man going to follow him, he got to first deny himself. Yes. The first person you got to put up with if you're going to follow God is yourself. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes yourself is a whole lot to deal with. Right. I guess I'm talking to folk who were born safe. Uh -huh. Now, you live for God, yourself is a lot to deal with. I'm not self got some hatred, uh -huh. some unforgiveness. Uh -huh. Sometimes self just lasts a days ago. You ain't even got an excuse why you ain't doing right. You just ain't going to do it. Yes. Woo! I asked him out one day. He said, Pastor, what's wrong with me? I hate myself. I said, now you're ready for God to use you. Y'all get that on your way home. You just what God wants you. When you start getting tired of yourself. Uh -huh. Let me out. He's your flair. You said that. You said that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you got to point. I hate my ways. I hate the way I act. I hate the way I think. Every time I put my two cents in, I messed it up. You ever try to straighten God out? Tell God what to do and when to do it. Give God an ultimatum. You got the Friday, Jesus. And sometimes God will wait the Thursday just to show you. you ain't the one in charge. Somebody say amen. 
I ain't crazy as I look. Watch this. Oh, glory to God. I'm almost done. And them ye shall kill and crucify. Follow me in the book. Ooh. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Ain't nothing like when people get hollering your church, they start spreading your name from city to city. Everywhere you go, it's a problem. You be wondering, I don't even folks even know me why they mad. I don't even folks ain't never met me. They upset. But can I tell you something? You are responsible to receive when God placed people in your life. In regards to what anybody says. You remember the blind man in the Bible, I believe it's John 2nd chapter. The blind man in the Bible who was born uh, blind, the Bible said after they got mad at Jesus and tried to find fault and accuse him. It's always people trying to find fault on men and women of God like the Bible just said. They came to his parents and said, who is this thing that, what is this thing that happened to your son? Who is this man, Jesus, that they said, heal your son? And the parents said, you go and ask him. He can speak for himself. He's old enough to talk for himself. When you start maturing in God, you don't need nobody else to answer for you. You know, I know what I know. I see what I see. I'm paying attention to what I'm paying attention to. I'm like the old folks. You can't make me doubt them because I know too much about them. So they come to the blind man and said, who is this Jesus that did all this? They said, don't give him praise. Give God the praise. See, there's a spirit on people trying to make it seem like men of God are trying to get you to praise them. And by praising them, you ain't praising God. You got to watch manipulation in the spirit realm. When you praise who God sent, you praise God. That's hard for some of you all. That's why he said, you receive who I sent, you receive me. If you receive him, you receive me. If you praise the miracles God used them to do, you praising me. If you testify God used that man, that woman God to do this, you're testifying really of who I sent and what I did. See, it's hard on some of you, even right now. What are you trying to say? I ain't trying to say nothing. It's right there in your Bible. You give the praise to God, but by praising who God used, you are praising God. Don't never curve a testimony because you're trying to make it seem like God didn't use who he used. When that woman came to the well, thank you, Holy, you know I got a word for you, everything. When that woman came to the well, she didn't go back and say, God told me all the things I did. She said, come and see. Uh, oh, you know the scripture. Come see a man yes, that told me all things uh, ever I did. Yes. And the Bible said when they came, and they begin to see this man who was being used of God. We know it was Jesus that many of the Samaritans got saved because they came to see for themselves. We have taught people to go to God, but because you never submitted to a pastor and you never fully submitted to a man or woman of God, we've never taught people to submit to leaders on the earth. Wow, what a word from the Lord. I want to encourage you to take heed to that word. Let that word keep you encouraged so you can understand the things that God has in store for you. God has benefits for his people. You are one of God's people. There's a benefit for you. Do you not know that one of the benefits of God is the manifestations of the spirit? The Bible declares and says, he who comes to God must first believe that he is. And then it says, and that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. You know, one of the things I love about the Lord is that he always make manifest himself. Because he know we cannot serve a God unless we first believe that he exists. Now hear me by the Holy Spirit. Listen to me very carefully. One of the ways God manifests himself is through his gifts of the spirit. There's one spirit. It's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. But he manifests himself in different forms through the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the gifts of the Spirit God has graced us with in our ministry is the gift of the word of knowledge and also the gift of prophecy. As you continue to watch this program, I want you to see how God made manifest this gift in one of our recent services as God began to perform, as he always does, as the Spirit of God is in operation. Stay tuned. She's been with us every night. I think last night she couldn't make it, but I'm so glad uh, I've never seen them as far as I know in my life, but I'm so glad they've made it here. I just tell her this rather than blessing to you. Come on, give her a nice warm welcome here. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. I just want to give honor to the pastor. Amen. The honor shepherd. Amen. To the beautiful woman of God. Amen. Of the church. Amen. To everybody that make up the household. Amen. Of, of God. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I just give honor to him. Amen. I, my life is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I just thank God. Amen. For who he is. Amen. I came here, I moved here from Kansas City, amen. I moved to Sherwood, amen. And I just thank God, amen. Me and my husband, I, I, I'm a worshiper, amen. God have showed it to the man of God, amen. I moved here and I said, Lord God, I said, Arkansas just ain't been too good to me. I said, look like I need to go back home, but I just thank God, amen. We need restoration and revival, amen. God is so good, amen. I began to hear the man of God on the radio. I said, Lord, he sound good to me. He sound like he holy, amen. Somebody that you don't mind following, amen. I don't want to follow anybody, amen, because I believe in living a holy, clean, sanctified life, amen. He's a holiness without. No man should see the Lord. So I thank God, amen, as me and my husband began to listen to the man of God. I said, woo, he said, I th you think you want to go there? I said, I think I want to go. So I said, I'm going to use my Google because my husband is working, amen, and I like to give honor to him in his absence, amen. amen. And I said, I'm going to Google my way to Conway, Arkansas and find this place. So I came, amen, and I was looking. I came in expectation, amen. expecting, amen. I didn't come to spectate, amen, but I thank God, amen, as the man of God when he called me out, amen. I said, well, Lord, I thank you. You got a word for me, hallelujah. Y'all don't know what I've been through, amen? amen? I've been through hell, as they say, in high water, but I thank God that God carried me through yeah. as he did the Hebrew boys. But I thank God, amen, and I'm not going to stay up here too long, but I thank God, amen, that the man of God, amen, God showed him I was going through some things. I came down here, amen. I ended up having to have surgery. Never had surgery in my life, amen? And after I had the surgery that week, I fell the next week and broke my back. So I'm already dealing with pain and stuff before I had the surgery with my back and my neck. And I'm dealing with, you know, breaking my back on top of that. I said, oh God, I look like I just need to go back home with my family. I'm a grandmother of 20-some kids, amen. I'm a great-grandmother, soon to be. So I just thank God. Been married almost 40 years, amen, amen. to the same man. So I just thank God, amen, for who he is, amen. amen. But I thank God as the man of God spoken to my life, I said, Lord, that's confirmation. I needed that. Amen. amen. So I thank God for a real prophet of God. Amen. amen. I respect and I honor, amen, the woman of God and man of God. I just thank God for knowing that God going to do what he said he's going to do in my life. Amen. I thank God for confirmation. Amen. Friend, we're so thankful that you took the time out of your life to allow us to speak into your life tonight. We pray something was heard. We even pray that something may have been seen that blessed you and that encouraged you. And I truly believe that this is a supernatural connection from God. Please feel free to call us for any prayer request. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, we would like to pray with you and pray for you. Go to the phone. Go to our website. Connect with this ministry. There's other connection opportunities that you have. If you look at your screen, whether it's through social media, stay connected to this ministry. And until next week, friend, we'll see you. God bless you, and we love you.